What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the channel for another ghost interview celebrating a very special thing right now with Brandon Scott Jones, who is a Critics' Choice nominee for Best Supporting Actor in a Comedy Series, and then also Ghost Overall is nominated for Best Comedy Series. So yay, that's how it should be. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, we're all, we were very, very excited. It was a very cool, cool thing to happen to the show. Well deserved. I mean, you all know this, but you are one of my favorite comedy series. So this nomination made all the sense in the world. <laughs> oh my gosh. It thank you. Thank you very much. And it's it's it, it's a really it was like a real fun day when we had that. It felt like our first big group thing, which was really, really nice. So I like to be a real big cheese ball about award season because I feel like sometimes with like prognostication and doing all the prediction type stuff, we we lose sight of how valuable it can be both to someone personally getting nominated, but also what it can mean beyond that as well, whether it's to the show overall or to the industry in general. So what does a nomination like a CCA nomination mean to you? Oh my gosh, it it means it, it means so much. First it's it's extraordinarily flattering especially for the show and we were all very excited because we know that especially in like this landscape of television there's so many opportunities to watch different things and there's so many channels there's so many platforms that there's a lot of competition for people's eyeballs so to know that people are are watching the show and enjoying the show I think is the thing that is is you know is the most meaningful right it's um it's it's a really really cool experience to have to share that with everybody to say that like okay we're up here in montreal shooting the show and it's nice that it goes out into the world and people are receiving it really really well it, it was very moving very touched i want to make it all about you now though okay. what, what what does it mean to you to you personally does it get i mean i i would imagine you have confidence in your craft and we don't do this for awards but yeah. does getting a nomination and recognition like this kind of mean something to you on a personal level as well it, it it really does it you know it it, it the show that uh, that um that we're on is such an ensemble show so it is this type of thing where i feel um very lucky it reminded me of how lucky i am to be with those casts because your performance is only as good as the people around you and i just feel like i'm around the best on that show and so it w the fact that it happened that that my name got called that that's very 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 sweet but i know that it could happen for any of us um and it, it's really exciting because you know as an actor i've always loved the critics and <laughs> i <laughs> like to hear it do. that's what we do no and and no but it is very very sweet because you know there's people who you know are in this profession and they watch a, everything and and to and to be acknowledged in 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 that regard is, is really really wonderful all right now, because I love award season so yeah. much and like getting silly about it. I love doing like end of year lists and this love type it. of stuff. Yeah. Let's say you were in control of your own award show and you got to make up the most like wacky out of left field category and mm -hmm. give it to the show, the movie, the actor of your choice. What category would you pick and who would win it? Ooh, gosh. Okay. Um. Oh my gosh. Well, I also will preface this by saying that for a long time when I was younger, obsessed with award shows, like to the point where won a couple of online contests, uh, Oscar predictions. So this is something, if I was going to give out the Brandies, the Brandy Award for me would be best background actor. And it would be the one that it would be for, I wonder who I'd get this year, but it's usually going to be somebody in like, um, like a, a news situation where like there, there's a bunch of people like asking questions at like a press conference. And there's maybe an actor that doesn't have a line, but it's really given a present performance. And so I would go through a lot of that. I would also do that for um, triangle of sadness because I feel like there were so many people on that boat that were giving extremely great performances and they might not have had lines. So I'm like, well, we got to celebrate that somehow. I love that. I, I feel like that should actually be an award. Wouldn't it be great? Wouldn't I mean, it be? I mean, see, like, really, uh, like, yeah. honestly, because even even though we have our main ensembles and everything, yeah. nothing will feel real if the folks in the background roles are not giving peak performance. Then you completely ruin the illusion and it doesn't work. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Because I think even like there's those moments where like I'm, I'm using Triangle of Sadness just because it's the movie that stuck with me a lot this year. Um, but there's so many times where they're like rocking back and forth on that boat or these violent, awful, gross things are happening around them and everybody has to be reacting because if everyone's not reacting, 
reacting that's not going to feel on screen. And so I'm like, as a group, that cast main and supporting and background I felt like did such a great job. I could watch anything and everything in a horror movie. Yes. I I get a little weird about vomit though. So I'm watching like Ooh. all this gory stuff throughout 2022. And then I watch Triangle of Sadness, like looking between my fingers at the vomit sequence. A hundred percent. I'm the same way but with snakes. Like if I, I could watch literally like skin rip off somebody. I just watched, um, what was it, Relic the other day? Did you see that oh, film? what a great choice. Relic is fantastic. Yeah, it was really, it was like, what incredible performances, but then not not spoiling anything, but there's a moment with some body horror stuff. And I was totally fine watching that. But then I like literally flipped over and like my TV defaults to like a nature channel and there was a snake and I couldn't, couldn't look at it. All right. I'm glad I'm in good company. You yes, uh, yes, you make me feel a little bit better about where I draw the line with these things. Yes. <laughs> in the best transition ever from body horror to, to ghosts. There we go. I wanted to go back to the beginning. So day one, when you were first auditioning for the role, what would you say is the biggest difference between how you pictured Isaac then and who he's become now? Oh my gosh. Um, that's, oh, that is such a great question. Um, he was in my brain when I first read him was very, very reserved and much smaller. And I think <laughs> um, as I've gotten a chance to play him, uh, he's sort of uh, gotten to be a little bit more flamboyant, not necessarily even in his mannerisms, but just in um, the way the way he um, mo interacts with everybody in the house. So I, I used to think that I was like, okay, let's like really lock in as like the leader in this and that he'll be just super dry, super, super grounded. And I think as we've gotten to explore the character, he's gotten to have bigger pops of emotion. I think because I was, I remember the, the when I got the script and I got the, the 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 sides for the audition i remember thinking i was like there's no way i'm gonna they're gonna buy me as a as a soldier i just don't have that i, I just didn't feel like i had that gravitas or that 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 type of i don't know just you know you think of like stephen lang and avatar as like a soldier <laughs> you know what i mean and i was like i don't know if i have that but as um so i felt like it all had to be very very rigid and very very um Put together but then as we started doing a little bit more of it the more he got to loosen up i feel is and have more emotion i have think has been like the most fun and that's to me been like the differences i guess oh my i can't imagine the character without those those kinds of pot really every single character for that matter it's it's yeah. really incredible how well everybody plays into their stereotype but also has those opportunities to take wild creative swings and have those pops so Literally everyone in this gigantic ensemble stands out. I'll never get it. We're two seasons in now, and I still can't get over that. Oh, you're very sweet. Thank you very much. That's 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 so nice. Yeah, it's it's it was, you know, in an ensemble show like that, we were. I remember feeling like we were all trying to like figure each other out and figure out how, where we all stand. And I remember thinking, I was like, okay, well, the more I keep stuff close to the chest, I think the the better it'll be. But then the fun has been just sort of letting his steam go and letting his desperation really peek through, you know, whereas I thought in the very beginning, he wouldn't let that stuff come out. I have like the biggest shit eating grin on my face because I have a really <laughs> good follow up to that. Okay. You were just saying at the beginning, you were all trying to figure each other out. Who was the easiest to peg in terms of like their techniques and what they were doing and who, who took you the longest to figure out in that respect? Oh, that's so cool. Um, I would say the easiest was from was Rebecca, Rebecca, who plays Hetty. Um, she, I feel like, came in and just had this character down pat and like the way she just moved through the space, the way she held her body. It was really, really awesome to watch. And I remember watching her in the pilot episode when we were filming the pilot. And then even in the first portions of last season, seeing somebody completely um, just like she's going in hard on research. She knows everything, knows that character front to back in a way that not that none of us, not, we're not also doing that work, but in the way that she kind of put it out there and just like held the room together with that character. And so I was like, okay, I see what you're doing. And I'm really, really, really into it. And I thought she was a good marker for Isaac because she felt like she had the most status, but he was the character that wanted the most status. So that was the first thing that I remember sort of like latching onto. And then taking a long time to figure out was, I would say, 
all of the like where the this is going to be strange, but like almost like the base Nancy and all the basement ghosts. Nancy came in a little, bit, a little bit later, but those basement ghosts have been around since the very, very beginning. And I think figuring out what their vibe is against the rest of the house was really, really funny to me. And I miss them. Yes, <laughs> I, I miss them too. Seen them in a couple. I was worried that the uh, the inspector that was approving them for the alcohol license would yeah. would like go downstairs and like somehow see something that they left behind. Yeah, th- there has <laughs> to be some relic of cholera in that pit, right? <laughs> I get you would think so. You would think, yeah. I know that would be, yeah. I think that, I know for a fact they are coming back and. There was a few more times. So we're going to get some cholera ghosts, which is great. This is the problem with having such a big ensemble and also being so on point with introducing guest stars with every single episode is that I just want everyone to stay like this is this is a lovely, wonderful show where I just want everyone to die. So they're always in the manner together. You know what? There's a selfish, there's a selfishness of that too for all of us ghosts. We're like, oh, there's when we get a guest star and you're sort of excited to to see them, you realize, oh, I'm not gonna be able to talk to them unless they die. Maybe they'll die. <laughs> I won't I won't make this one super mean, but it's kind of mean. If you if if Isaac maybe had the opportunity to to kill one visitor and and keep them as a friend, uh-huh. who do you think he would pick? Oh my gosh, kill a visitor. I think he would kill Jay because I think he's still in love with Jay. Um, but that as a visitor, I would say last season, um, there was a couple that was trying to get married and there was a, a social media uh, user, that uh, influencer. And I think deep down, Isaac deeply respected that woman. And so I think they would get, they would be, they would be good friends, I think. <laughs> There's another thing that I've wondered with him, and that's kind of that could be the answer there. If he had the opportunity to actually physically interact with like something modern, like whether it's technology or anything, like what would he choose? I, I could see him like getting a phone and being a TikTok star or something. Oh, 100 percent I think he would tr- <laughs> truly he'd be like really big on political TikTok. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Actually, this is what we were talking about when we said the right to bear arms. Um, and so he could really add some uh contextual uh some context for for a lot of the political discourse that we have but i also could see him being absolutely obsessed with wikipedia and changing his, if he could interact with his own <laughs> wikipedia page that thing would be the longest it would be a novel in and of itself that actually would be hilarious i would even just watch an entire episode of him putting trevor to work like word by <laughs> word changing his entire wikipedia page. yes exactly <laughs> creating other websites to support the <laughs> you know operation Going back to the beginning for you personally as an actor, what is something that you did in either season of the show that would make like day one you auditioning for Isaac go like, wow, I never would have believed that I'd be capable of doing that in this role one day? Uh, Oh, oh my gosh, that's uh, capable of doing that. I would say, um, you know, there's, Day one, Isaac would be surprised with um, how uh, free the character has become in terms of the way he even physically will move through a space. I think he's sort of become a little bit more jaunty um, and which is really fun. I, I think anytime that my character gets to do something slightly physical, I, I, I think I never could have imagined that. I know that seems almost like benign but there was something about where this character was very very still the entire time and now he's sort of like moving around a lot which would be which is great and there's also a moment where this is also very very uh small but getting to change his hairstyle was something i never thought i would get a chance to do and in a couple episodes i've got to have like a flashback with a different wig and i thought that was that was that would blow my mind day one. I think about that a lot with um with hair, makeup, and wardrobe. It was just crossing my mind also with the show What We Do in the Shadows, the yeah. idea of like playing a character who essentially looks the same in every episode for whatever reason. And then all of a sudden, maybe you can access different corners of them by just switching up the look. Yes, yeah, a hundred percent. That was that was 
I remember that was a very exciting time because, you know, as an actor, when you're doing a TV show that's not like this, you're going to fittings once a week, trying to get, you know, seeing, you know, figuring out your character visually. But this is it. This is where you stay. And so I think when we have those little flashback pops to get to kind of like go through, see other costumes, it really does start to layer and sort of add background history to to a performance that you don't get the chance to access that as much, you know? Yeah. I feel like I can't ask you a serious question without following it up with a sillier one, mm-hmm. but I don't know how uh, comfortable your costume is, but if you had the opportunity, just like you personally, yeah. to swap with anyone in the show, whose wardrobe would you rather be wearing? Flower. Flower. <laughs> I would be <laughs> all in that. It looks so <laughs> comfortable. Other than the, other than all like the dirt makeup and so forth, the, the, the actual flowy, costume of it looks so comfortable it's so i'm like i think about that quite frequently (laughs) rock solid choice right there uh back to the serious stuff Mm -hmm. looking back of all of the scenes that you've done what would you say was the toughest one for you to crack like you guys get great scripts on this show but you know something isaac goes through or a choice that he has to make that required you to sit with that decision more Mm -hmm. to really for yourself justify why he did a certain something um I, I, the the first one that comes to my mind is is when he kind of comes out of the closet to Hetty um, in uh, last season in season one, and I think the the what what's really interesting, or I guess what I find challenging, and maybe I I shouldn't, maybe I should f- find some peace with this, is that when a character like this confesses something and finally releases something, it's not like they've been holding on to this for like a decade. They've been holding on to this for centuries. And so it feels so much more enormous and trying to wrap your brain around like the why now of something. And I agreed, like we get this like great writing and you want to service it, but then there's this like little like actor side of you that's sort of like, okay, in the 250 plus years that I've been dead, I haven't found the opportunity to let this come out yet, or I've held on to it for this long. And so I remember like the silliness of that episode of me, like the last ditch attempt of trying to you know, Rebecca and I trying to like, or Rebecca's trying to seduce me and, or me trying to seduce Rebecca's character. Um, and then kind of juxtapose that with like this really like low moment for this character. I thought was, that was hard. I remember sitting with that in my trailer being like, don't this up. <laughs> This kind of pairs well with that. And I'll put a spoiler warning out for our viewers, because at this point, I want to talk a little bit about the uh, the Christmas special and what goes down uh, in that in that double episode. But speaking of like the idea of, you know, being able to convey something that he's been carrying for so long in a half hour comedy, you're you're doing that with something else here. And I'm going to borrow words that I heard from you in another interview you did, because I think you put it really succinctly and accurately. But when when you say that um, in those episodes, Isaac is kind of exploring the idea of like, who am I if I'm not the thing that I said I was? That is a really big thing to tackle in in a, a half hour, like 20 minute amount of, of screen time in an episode. So when you knew you were jumping into stuff like that, what became your top priorities to make sure to you, you were making the most of that idea, but with such little screen time to actually dig into it? Oh. Perry, this is such a cool question. Um, that it, it's it, and it's, oh my gosh. Um, I would say the top priority was trying to find in that episode specifically, or like in like the Christmas episode, hoping that the performance wouldn't give you whiplash. If that makes sense, that because you could you know, obviously even when you're shooting things out of order, you're going to go ahead and make a big choice and say, okay, well, this is the romantic moment where we do finally kiss, or this is the moment where I turn this person away, or this is the moment where I try to last ditch seduce somebody, or this is the moment where I finally confess how I, what, who I truly am. And I think that the opportunity of just saying, um, if, if I can just find, if, with my scene partner, if we can just find like the absolute truth of saying like, why let's not lean too hard into the drama of it. Let's just lean as hard as we can to like the truth of what's going out right there. And I guess the difference between those two things aren't, I, 
you don't want to go full tears and then full comedy because I think it might feel a little bit jarring, but trying to like temper it to say, well, you could see this person in the scene prior about to burst into tears if they weren't doing this thing. And then hopefully you can temper it. I don't know. Does that, does that make sense? Kind of what I'm saying? It does make sense. I can apply it to what we're specifically talking about. And also mm -hmm. so many other like deeply human and important things you guys go through on this show. I, I feel like I've said this a number of times when I'm talking, but you have that opportunity to like give the audience that whiplash effect and you never do it. You are oh, all you. able to jump between real drama and comedy at the drop of a hat. And my, my non-acting brain cannot compute how you actually fall it off <laughs> well that, that uh, honestly that truly that truly means a lot because i think what you're you're you you kind of hit the nail on the head when it's you have 20 minutes and 30 seconds to tell a story and of that you might be in six minutes of screen time trying to tell this full arc and you just hope that it, it doesn't go too hard in one direction so you try to find like i guess like the the best way to answer that is i think we all try to find the middle ground where at any moment you could go this way but it's never so extreme that you're sort of like freaking out <laughs> Spot on in that respect oh, wanted to bring up beatrice because i yep. like all that material quite a bit i would like to explore that even more so i don't know if there's anything on the horizon but let's say there's not is there any specific you know layer of or corner of their relationship that you think isaac would benefit the most from revisiting at this point um i think yeah i i always felt that if he were to really take a look back at his relationship with Beatrice, I think he would realize there's a lot of the shortcomings and he's already started to deal with that where he feels like he wasn't able to give her the life that maybe she deserved. But looking back, like what kind of team were they? What type of, they were maybe a little bit more of a modern romance that we see more publicly now than we certainly did back then. And see how maybe, even though this romance wasn't full of, you know, sex um and maybe like deep deep romantic feelings that they had a love for each other that i think is just as valuable and i think it would be really cool for him to try to understand that there's a difference between a romantic marry have a family love and you know or maybe there's not as much of a difference and then, and then also this like this this teamwork where you're like it, it's, it's the same thing if you're supporting somebody else i would love to see I, I guess a good example of this is i've always imagined them being able to walk into a dinner party together and they might have maybe had the best time and not realized it like everyone else was a little bit miserable because they are sort of desperate i don't know have you seen the movie cha-cha real smooth I haven't yet. That's so funny. I'm it, so like a lot of what you're explaining is reminding me of that because that's a that's a movie that basically takes a look at a modern relationship and it 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 twists and turns the idea of what a soulmate is to yeah. convey that soulmate isn't just meeting the love of your life and like living living happily ever after having a traditional version of a relationship. There's like a million different types of valuable connections out there to have. Yeah, yeah. I think that's 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 almost that's perfect that's a perfect way to, there's a million different types of connections and for him i think you know i think what's fun about ghost as a whole is that when it tells a story that's very modern but dealing with a character from the past i think that's kind of like a sweet spot for the show and i think for a character like isaac where who just as a politician is somebody a founding father you know um you know, so rooted in traditions and so rooted in all of the idea of, of what specifically like marriage, like, oh, this is what the founding fathers wanted. The idea that he was actually doing something different and doing something that people are just getting to publicly explore a little bit more now, I think could be really cool. I love exploring that kind of gray area. Yeah. I have two, I, not silly questions. This one's actually like a meaningful question you can answer, but it's looking ahead a little bit. Mm -hmm. Let's say Isaac was able to share more screen time with anyone from the main ensemble. If mm -hmm. you could pick someone that he would have the most to gain from at this point in his experience, who would you pick and why? Oh, man. Um, the most to gain from, I think... I think he, I personally think he has a lot more to learn from Trevor uh, in the weirdest way, because I think he's, I, I don't think Isaac really respects Trevor very much, but I think that there is a hint of um, 
a confidence that maybe Isaac has never felt before. And I could see without it turning toxic, but I'm sure it could for, for comedy's sake, but without it turning too toxic, I could see him learning surprisingly valuable lessons from from him in terms of he already started to get it a little bit with the concept of like fraternity and friendship and so forth uh but i think he could find a way to like enjoy life a little bit more and if trevor if nothing else feels like somebody who has always tried the hardest to enjoy as much life as possible maybe that's flower stuff too you know of like just like loosening up a little bit because he's so you know this one's a little sillier and uh kind of just for fun, considering the possibilities out there. Mm. If you had the opportunity to write a possession body swap episode and mm. you could have any ghost possess any living that's been on the show of your choice, mm -hmm. which two characters would you pick? Oh, okay. Okay, so I I do have this idea of the ghosts possessing each other, but the the joke for me would always be that Isaac and Hetty switch bodies, and um, nobody can tell. <laughs> They're like, "What? No, oh, yeah, sure." But um, in terms of like a living, I think I would love. I think it would be <laughs> really funny for Mark, the contractor, to be. I think he, for him to get possessed because he's gets to interact with Jay a little bit more specifically. So I think, and as Jay's pretty much only friend, I could see a fun world where, where Pete getting to possess Pete, getting to possess Mark would be really, really fun because I think Pete would get the chance to hang out with him and get to actually be the friends that they want to be. I would see that as a really fun opportunity or best Nancy, the cholera ghost, possesses <laughs> Sam. <laughs> I love that too. Honestly, I'd love to see Rose just like go through the entire cast just to see her interpretation. I also just love the idea of seeing every single ghost ultimately possess a living and having that experience show what's most meaningful to them, whether it's like to eat as much food as they can yes. or or maybe to sit down and just like physically be able to play D&D, &D, something like that. Wouldn't that be great? Yeah, I think there is that like that's one of the fun little gateways that the show like the there's a couple little things where you're like, OK, there is a chance for them to to interact with the physical world through that way. So I think, yeah to see everybody get that chance to have Sam really go through the Rolodex of it. Sam and Jay, both of them, like they get all of it. It would be crazy. They're so good with that material. I'm going to end with a Renfield question because oh, that yeah. trailer just dropped this morning. And my, I can't even say it like blew me away because that's what I was expecting <laughs> for a Dracula film from this team. Yeah. I'll ask you a Nick Cage specific question because I was speaking to someone who had worked with him recently and she was telling me how he draws from all these different places and use, uses a, a, like a wide variety of acting techniques, some of which he doesn't see anybody use anymore. So is there anything that you saw him do on the set of Renfield that made even you think like, I can't believe people still do that, but it works. Oh my God. Um, yeah. Well, I, to kind of like, to start that answer, I would say I, one of the biggest takeaways I had when I came home from shooting that movie was, you, you know, you think Nicolas Cage has been in 14,000 movies. He's been acting forever. He's one of the best. He's so, so good. And, you know, there's this maybe cynical side of, yourself that you don't even know exists and i'm going to say yourself i'm kind of talking about myself where you're like uh kind of assume that maybe they're just sort of like going on autopilot or whatever and i watched this man come into work sit in the makeup trailer get all made up as dracula and then show up on set and was so excited and so I'm, oh my God, I almost got a little emotional because it was really moving to see someone love the craft so much. And he had these really funny moments where he, um, I remember him being like, here, wait, wait, uh, I just want to try something really quick. And then he would just like make a facial expression into the camera just so they could have it. Like, he know, like he was, he's always, ex he, he just felt like he was always exploring this character every chance he got to be on screen. 
um, and the little bit of screen time that we get to share together, it was really cool. One, of, I will say, look, one of the coolest things was uh, there's a moment where we're I can't oh, I can't really say anything without spoilers, but like um, he, it was. I, he pitched me a line. He was like, whoa, 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 wait, wait. I got an idea. I got an idea. Say this. And that was my Nicholas Cage. Impression. That's pretty good. <laughs> oh, thanks. Yeah. Um, but he was like, oh, wait, wait. He's like, let's do it again. And then he was like, say this. He like pitched me a line, a joke to say. And it was really, really cool just to see him just so in it and fun and having the time of his life. Um, I don't know. I can't say it was the time of his life, but I can tell you that it looked like it was he was having a blast and it was a blast to be around it too. None of this surprises me. I feel like I've always gotten this impression from him, but yeah. you know, I, I guess for obvious reasons, it was unbearable weight of massive talent that like oh God, it yeah. was shining a bigger spotlight on that quality of his craft than ever. Yeah. And it just became abundantly clear that he is that type of actor. And I love that. It's, it's so, it's so cool. And then now he's playing Dracula in a universal movie. He's like part of the Dracula canon now. And it's like, how lucky are we to be alive during this period of time? I yeah. am so excited for that. I am so excited for more ghosts. I might have had a sneak peek at some upcoming episodes. And Ooh. yet again, they're excellent. Oh, thank Brennan, you. thank you so much for talking to me today. And huge, huge, huge congratulations on both CCA nominations. I am always rooting for you and the team. Oh my gosh, thank you, Perry. This is, as always, the best talking to you. 